Hey, what's up, y'all? And of course, welcome to another Alternative Factuals video. Remember, please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe, and let me know what you think about these theories, and also check out my social media accounts down in the description below. Like I said, you don't always have to just hit me up on YouTube or anything else. You know, I'm very much out there on social media, just like any other 25-year-old. But, um, all right, so before I dive into today's topic for the video, just wanna make sure you guys understand, you know, the reason I made this channel is was to discuss theories. You know, I wanna discuss those theories that are out there online and basically kind of dissect them or basically kind of let you know that they're out there just in case you might be thinking the same thing but also I want to hear your comments down below so unless I tell you something in a video is an absolute fact chances are it's probably just a theory so don't assume naturally you know based on you know the title or something like that that it's an absolute fact it is a theory so I'm not trying to clickbait you because obviously we are going to be talking about that subject matter that's going to be in the title heading but for the most part like I said a lot of these videos are simply just theories and you know I'm not really talking too much in the fact you know because I'm pretty sure there's other channels that go hunting for you know things that you need to know things that are facts you know for the most part I only do it if it's absolutely relevant for a video in the future or if it's gonna be relevant you know for me to discuss it in terms of what I want to talk about but for the most part I just like to have fun and talk about these theories and I want to hear your theories as well so without further ado let's kind of move forward from this uh, I guess discussion anyways um, so season three of Cloak and Dagger still is not confirmed. So please do not say like, hey, this is what's going to happen for season three, because honestly, I don't know. The only people who know that are the people who are writing the shows, the directors, whatever. They're the only ones who know what's going on for season three of Cloak and Dagger, if there is going to be one. But nonetheless, if there is a season three, what I would like to see, you know, what I think a lot of people would like to see basically is, you know, kind of more Tandy's story when it comes to her father. Now, for season one, we saw a lot of Tyrone's family. You know, we know about his dad. We know about his mom. We know about the whole situation, how it's affecting them both. Basically, what's going on in this whole, you know, household situation when it comes to his side. And we know a little bit about, you know, Tandy and, you know, her mom and basically her discovering at the ending of season one that her dad was actually abusive towards her mom and that her mom is the way that she is because she basically took the grunt of the abuse to make sure Tandy did not get that side of him. But this is something I want to discuss because one, like I said, there is a comic book about these, you know, these two individuals, you know, they're, they're not brand new, you know, they came out in the 80s, you know, they've been out for a little while, you know, they're, 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 they're definitely, you know, one of the OG of the comics, you know, 20 years from like, you know, the 60s, but you know, so that, like I said, they've been out there for like 40 years total about. And uh, for the most part, you know, we got really introduced to, you know, Tandy's mom in Strange Tales number two, um, volume two, number two. And basically we knew that her name was Melissa Bowen and that, you know, she was married and, you know, Tandy was, you know, born. And then, you know, eventually Tandy's mother became this really greedy, materialistic kind of woman. And then, you know, we dive into, you know, Cloak and Dagger in um, volume one, number four, where basically, you know, Dagger's father basically uh, splits off to India to contemplate, you know, his lifestyle and, you know, basically everything that he does and basically left the estate to Tandy's mother. And, you know, she liked that because, you know, she was materialistic. And this is basically just in comics. Now, this is where the fun, interesting part about Tandy's uh, father pretty much comes in when it comes to the comics. Now, in Strange Tales, number uh, volume two, number two, this is also where we get some detail about, you know, what he's been up to when he left. So in India, he studied with a series of gurus, but basically he sought this light that seemed to have been eluding him this whole time in terms of, you know, Tandy and her abilities, something similar to that, because remember, this is Marvel Comics. People want powers all the time. And one day he approached this derailed train, right? He's basically dealing with this freak accident with these people. And basically the light or the life force of these people fled from their dying bodies and somehow they attracted to him and infused to him. Basically, he was combined with this light and then ultimately he became almost like Tandy, but necessarily not, not necessarily the same way. Tandy can keep creating light. She's almost like an infinite source of light. While he, on the other hand, even though he was able to absorb the light of the people who were dying from the train incident, he basically established his own temple, pretending to help others get in touch with that light. And after he did that for years and years and years, he was known as Lord of Light. He basically drained others of their light. First, he would drain people who were dying. Then he would just drain regular people. And then at that point, he established some sort of following and he stored light in his followers there by giving them the illusion of having powers, having abilities. And then ultimately, he ended up draining them later on anyways. So basically, he was just seasoning up his followers to be like, okay, I'll give you a little bit of power. I'll give you a little bit of light. I'll give you a little something, something, you feel me? But ultimately, I'm going to drain that light later. So I'm basically, I'm just making you nice and ripe and, you know, having, you know, some good juicy connections to that light. So that way, when I drain you, you're going to be nice and fat. 
but um now this is you know i'm not going to get too deep into you know the comic book origin because this is what i want to discuss now from the depiction that we've seen him in you know first initially in season one he seemed like a decent guy but then we discovered that obviously he was very abusive towards tandy's mother now in most cases you know people who are very much abusive you know i've never really been an abusive you know relationship i've never been abusive i'm a bit of a sweetheart ladies but um ultimately you know when you're in an abusive relationship usually that means there's something a little off about the way that you process emotions and even sometimes if you're one of those people who've experienced you know abusive relationships in terms of your family and you know you think that that's love you think abusive relationship is love i think in his case he might be someone who you might identify closer with you know a sociopath or someone who just can't seem to regulate his emotions the same way that you know me and you can for example um so i think in when it comes to the tv show the way that they de um, depicted him was he, he seemed a little off and um, if you've seen a couple scenes with him, you know, even in the flashbacks, you know, yeah, he has a little smirk, he has a little smile, but he doesn't always seem to be quite okay in the head. And even the, the, the whole abuse situations, you can tell like there's something a little off about him. And I, I think for season three, what they're going to attempt to do if they decide to do this, remember, this is not a fact, but ultimately, I think they're going to try and say he's alive. They're going to say like, yes, somehow the same way how Tandy, Tyrone, basically how they got powers, that he has powers. But instead of coming directly home, you know, basically like despair, you know, he went out and dealt with his powers however he felt was, you know, I guess the best way possible to deal with those powers. So basically, you know, I feel like they're going to give him the same abilities where he has the ability to drain light or life force. And then he's going to go out there. He's draining people. He's draining people, draining people. But then, you know, obviously he's not on the radar because most people haven't fully registered the fact that there is someone out there who has these abilities. Remember, people are just now discovering about Cloak and Dagger. And I, what I mean, just now discovering there's only about like 10 people who know about them. So, you know, just now are people starting to understand the concept of, you know, superhuman or enhanced humans and even that whole situation with despair. Now, what would make this fun is like imagine Tandy kind of dealing with, you know, I think that was the whole premise of, you know, season one and two, where she's still coping with a lot of the things that she thought she knew about herself, her mom and, you know, her dad. But then ultimately what's going to change is the simple fact that her dad is a sociopath. He's crazy. And then imagine someone who's an absolute sociopath and crazy with similar powers to her, where her powers are not necessarily you know effective against him because he wants that infinite source of light because his power is to siphon that light while you have a daughter who can just keep giving off that light keep giving off that light and to him that would be like hmm you know i never really sought to abuse her when she was normal so hey she has powers now she's useful to me i can just keep siphoning her and then basically she can keep feeding me and i think the only person that i think tandy would obviously need help dealing with him would be tyrone who has the opposite the dark force ability you know able to you know consume that light into his darkness in a very much different way so basically his light would kind of be you know it would be neutral or it would be absolutely nothing to you know tyrone because he can absorb that light at least that's the nature of his abilities you know his darkness feeds off that light and then that light needs that darkness to kind of you know keep itself in you know checking um, checks and balances basically you know the yin and yang force you know you have light and dark you know one cannot exist without the other and that's basically why she would need his help because his powers would not be effective against tyrone at least you know in the comics they had a little interaction for like a split moment and then you know uh tandy's father overwhelmed him with so much light to the point he reverted back to his human form but that was a little early in the comics and i think i don't know if that's really still technically canon but you know marvel they don't do any hard reboots for the most part they just do these soft reboots where technically they're canon but at the same time they're not really referenced anymore i don't know but cloak is able to absorb at least in his i, I guess peak form or current you know version of him he can absorb a lot of light so in reality you know he would be the only one who has any resistance towards him when it comes to you know dispersing light and trying to combat you know tandy's father you know together they'll be able to do that and defeat him but i think it'll be super dope to see his um tandy's father because i think we haven't seen a full-blown psychopath or a full-blown villain because even though despair was in the tv show even though he was not depicted in his comic book form which is basically someone who just you know gave pieces of his soul to you know tyrone and tandy basically his light in a dark forest you know forms um ultimately he's not necessarily a villain in the tv show he was a villain by necessity he sought to relieve those headaches that he was experiencing simply because okay i'm having these headaches and the only way i can constantly feed this 
you know, uh, despair, you know, I guess dimension or whatever you want to call it. Ultimately, you know, I have to achieve godhood and me achieving godhood is the only way I can constantly feed without having to, you know, you know, feed on people physically, you know, without having to, you know, touch them every time. At that point, I'll be a part of the lower, which, you know, have access to unlimited amount of dark emotions. So even though I obviously I don't agree with what he did, you know, it, ultimately it's human nature. You know, when you experience pain, you're going to want to, you know, satiate that pain, make sure that pain goes away and you'll do just about anything to do that. And that's exactly what he did. He ascended to, you know, the lower basically to just satiate that pain he was dealing with, which ultimately did not make him evil by default. Now, I would love to see Tandy's father there and then him just being a full blown out of pocket psychopath. Like I want him to see, you know, I want him to pull up and I want him to run fades crazy. I want him to, you know, show me like, yes, I am your dad and I never loved you. And I left your mom because I never loved her. You're nothing to me. And you're just basically someone I need to siphon powers off of. And that's all you are to me. That would be amazing. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have opinions about Cloak and Dagger and, you know, the possibility of what season three could be about. As well as that whole crossover situation with the runaways. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you feel. And if you are new to the channel, please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe. Leave your comments down below and also help me name my subscriber base. You know, I have a couple people who have, you know, put out suggestions. You know, what should I call my subscriber base in terms of, you know, the, you know, the alt factuals, you know, crew or whatever like that. You know, let me know what you feel like I should name the, you know, subscriber base. And I hope to see you later on. Peace out.